Most diet plans nowadays focus on cutting carbohydrates in order to lose weight. Why is this? Are carbohydrates the villainous macronutrient that's making all of us fat? Well, today on Fit and 50, we are going to take a look at why we cut carbs when we want to lose body fat. Now, simple logic would tell us if we want to lose fat, then we should cut fats from our diet. But it turns out dietary fat is not a major determinant in body fat. Now, there are two major determining factors when it comes to wanting to lose fat off our bodies. And one is we must be in a calorie deficit. And the second one is our insulin sensitivity. We don't talk enough about this second factor. Now insulin, as with everything in our body, performs some very important functions. For example, it protects our muscles from being used as energy and it improves the amino acid absorption into them so we can build even more muscle. But on the flip side, it is the most fat storage hormone in the body. Talk about a double-edged sword. Now if you're sedentary and overweight, odds are you are insulin resistant, which means your body doesn't properly use insulin. But what does this have to do with carbohydrates? Well, insulin is secreted from the pancreas and its primary job is to transport glucose from those carbohydrates to the muscles to be used as energy. But because it's a fat storage hormone, the more of it that you have in your system, the harder it becomes to burn body fat for energy. So how do we get to the point where we have too much insulin in our bloodstream? Well, in today's diet, we have a lot of highly processed carbohydrate sources, from breakfast cereals to snack foods, from breads to pastas. And all of these require more insulin to be present in order to break them down and transport the glucose to the muscles. And with this constant high level of insulin in our systems, eventually we become resistant to insulin and fat storing machines. But we don't want to be fat storage machines. We want to be muscle building machines. So how do we flip that switch and get our insulin sensitivity back so that we can use it to its muscle building advantage? Because there's such a strong relationship between being insulin resistant and being overweight, I'm going to use body fat percentages to give you a bit of an idea as to how you should adjust your diet in order to get your insulin sensitivity back. Now, if you're over 25% body fat, then you need to be on a very low carb diet. Say, for example, like a paleo diet. I don't specifically endorse a paleo diet, but it gives you an idea how low a carb you should be. Now, once you've gotten under 25% body fat, and if you're training hard, regular, and consistent, then you can start reintroducing a few carbs into your diet, focusing primarily on clean, whole food sources. So you'd be going from a very low carb diet to a low carb diet. Stay away from the processed foods. So once we've gotten down around that 10% body fat level, then we can start to fully reintroduce carbohydrates into our diet. Say with a macro split of 30% protein, 20% fats, and we could even go as high as say 50% carbs. When it comes to protein, I always recommend we keep it a bit high in our diet as protein really helps us to feel full. And with regards fats, well, as we increase carbs in our diet, we need to reduce the amount of fats that we're taking in. Now, I know this is a lot of information to take in in a short little video, but what I really want you to take away from this is that in order for us to get control over our bodies again and our, get our insulin sensitivity back so that we can properly burn body fat for energy, we need to cut carbs. But there does come a point where we need to reintroduce these carbs into our diet in order to get the full muscle building benefits of carbohydrates and insulin. So this is Lawrence from Fit and 50 signing out. Keep working out, keep having fun, 
and we will talk to you again in that next video.